I'm Stephanie. This is Kiwi. And let's talk books. So let's talk about what I read in the month of November. The first half of the month went kind of slowly for me and I thought that I wasn't going to get through most of my TBR and then somehow in the second half I caught up. So I ended up reading 11 books this month. One's a graphic novel, one was a novella, and the other nine were novels. So the graphic novel that I read is Cheese Sweet Home Volume 3. I have been reading through this adorable Japanese cat comic this fall, and I absolutely adored this one. The story was super sweet and very lighthearted and enjoyable, and also a really quick read despite being kind of a chunky book. I'm really excited there's one more volume, and I will be really happy to enjoy that one as well. I read one nonfiction book this month, which is The Tipping Point, and this was a recommendation by a friend, and the idea above this book is trying to explain how large groups of people will change their minds about something in a very short period of time, how things will just happen, so when they hit the tipping point. So I thought this was very interesting and I liked some of the ideas that he presented about kind of social behavior of large groups of people, but I do wish there had been a little bit more practical application ideas in here because I kind of felt like I read this book and I was like, yeah, that's cool, but what do I do with this information? So. Maybe it just wasn't the right topic for me, but I would have really enjoyed if I could have felt like gung-ho and wanted to get up and do something to change my life after reading a book like this. I managed to read three audiobooks this month. The first one I read was book eight of The Wheel of Time, The Path of Daggers. This one was a real struggle for me. I didn't enjoy it. I felt like we spent a lot of time with side characters and I'm at the point where there's a lot of side characters that I just can't keep straight in my head because there are so, so many named characters in the series, like literally thousands. And that kind of really dragged for me. I didn't like where any of the main, like, plot points with our heroes were going, and I also felt like the ending of this one was kind of a letdown. I, there's been a couple of these where I didn't much like the beginning, but the ending was really excited and it kind of saved the book, and this one was kind of a dud for me. I also made it through Winter's Heart, which is book nine. I enjoyed this one significantly more, and I really blew through this one once I finally got a chance to listen to it. I like that especially like the whole first half of the book we're only following main characters so while we don't make a ton of progress with any of the characters because there are still a lot and there's a lot of stuff going on I enjoyed getting to be more invested in the character storylines so this one was a lot better for me there were a couple of things in here that I really didn't like some of the directions that he took some of the relationships with the characters I think I've just come to the point where I'm like, I don't like the way Robert Jordan writes any romantic relationships. Don't like any of them. That's okay. It's at least, it's not a romance book. There's not a, the main story isn't about the romances, but I just really don't like them. And I will be talking more about Wheel of Time. I'm going to do another Wheel of Time read through update a little bit closer to the end of the year. We'll talk a little bit more about that in that video. The last audiobook I read this month was Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. I love this series about superheroes who turn evil and the regular human beings who band together to take on these now supervillains. So I really enjoyed this. I actually feel like I enjoyed this a little bit more as a reread than the first time around. The main character, David, is your typical like 17, 18 year old kid and that's a little bit of a hard brain space for me to be in sometimes as a 30 year old woman. So knowing what I was getting myself into the second time around, I was a little bit more prepared for that sort of protagonist and I actually was able to enjoy being with him and his story a lot more. I also managed to get in Mitosis, which is the novella that comes after Steelheart. 
it's just a nice little fluff story to go in between one more adventure with David and the crew, but definitely not a must read. I feel like Brandon Sanderson's strengths really shine when he has a lot of space to show them off and when you get into something that's this long that doesn't leave him a lot of space to work with it and so he doesn't have the space to kind of have those really amazing punchy surprising yet inevitable endings. There were quite a few new releases in November that I was very excited to get to. A couple of them I had pre-ordered and a couple of them I was going to attempt to get to the library. I managed to get to read three of the four that I was wanting to read. The first one that came out at the beginning of the month was Supernova. This is the last book in the Renegade series, another YA superhero story. I really enjoyed this series. I thought it was so much fun and really creative. So I really enjoyed this final installment in the series. I thought how a lot of the storylines were wrapped up was really great and I enjoyed the final conflict and the ending of the story. There were some interesting choices made in the very last chapter, some of which I liked and I thought were cool and interesting, and some of them I didn't quite hit as well with me and I thought they were a little bit too cheesy. And I know some of that is just me as an adult reader reading a YA book. I have different expectations about how the world works and what I would like to see in my literature. But overall, I was really happy. I devoured this book in two days and I am definitely going to be rereading the series because I absolutely loved it. Another final installment that came out in November is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the final book in the Folk of the Air series. Now going into this one I wasn't expecting to like it as much as the Renegade series. I don't tend to like urban fantasy as much and by urban fantasy I just mean anything where part of the story place, takes place in the modern day world. A lot of this series does take place in the realm of the Fae, but some of the characters do travel back and forth into modern day America and that's not my favorite. I'm also not like super super hyped about the Fae, but I did enjoy the first two books of the series and I wanted to finish it. It ended up being kind of a small book, but I definitely think that Holly Black left herself enough space to uh, develop the characters and the plot lines and wrap up the series in a very satisfying way. I was happy with this. It wasn't anything that really blew me out of the water, but I did enjoy it and I'm glad I finished the series. I think part of the reason that kept me from enjoying the series as much as other people is I wasn't super into the romance and I didn't really care if the two people ended up together. That part of the storyline didn't have the emotional pull on me like I think it would have other people. The last new release of the month that I was able to read was Starsight and oh, so, so, so good. I loved Skyward. I felt that Skyward was the book that Brandon Sanderson would have written if I could have given him a list of the things that I loved most about the fantasy books that I grew up on that he would write and put his own twist to those things. So I was super hyped for this book to come out. I read it in one day. I would have read it in one sitting, but we went out to go see Frozen 2, which I was also super hyped to see, so I did get a little bit of a break in the middle. One of the things I really liked was how our main character, Spencer, developed throughout the course of this book. In the first book, her personality, much like David in the Reckoner series, can be a little bit overwhelming, a little bit grating sometimes. But again, teenagers can be like that. We were all teenagers once, and we all had our personality quirks. And so I really enjoyed seeing her grow and develop and become even more of a likable and relatable character. He took the story in a direction 
that I could not have anticipated at all and I really loved it. We got to see some really interesting things and delve a little bit more into the sci fi ness of this. In the first book, there is a lot of time spent on the flight training and the space battles and that's kind of the extent of the sci-fi. We get a little bit of, you know, fights with aliens, but not really any interactions with them. And in this book, we get a lot more into kind of the larger Skyward universe and what's going on and making discoveries about... Hi, Bird. You have something to say? Okay, thank you. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. It was just really well written. The ending was great. One of the things I particularly enjoyed about this book is that I was able to guess a couple of the things that were revealed in Sanderson's amazing endings. He does a very good job of leaving clues and hints, but they're really easy to pass over and not realize it until you get to the end and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that he started hinting about that way back at this other place where I didn't even think that that was a significant detail. And because I've been doing my Stormlight Archive rereads where I've been annotating them and taking notes and more like studying them, I think that really helped me to pick up on these clues because I don't think they were more obvious than he usually does, but I thought that was really cool and that made me really excited that I was like, ooh, 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 this is important, I have an idea, and I think this is what's going to happen, and then I got to that and I was like, yes, right, so, I am actually really sad that we're not going to get the final two Skyward books for a while because Brandon Sanderson has to finish Stormlight Archive number four before he gets back to the series, and he may also finish the Wax and Wayne Mistborn Era 2 book before the next two, so I feel kind of conflicted now about what book I want Brandon to work on next, but really good, very exciting, and I really hope that this series shines a light on YA sci-fi and we are able to kind of open that market up and get more great YA sci-fi books. The last book I read this month is The Golden Key. It's written by Melanie Ra, Jennifer Robertson, and Kate Elliott. This is a book that I read in college and I absolutely loved. It is a standalone fantasy novel. It's set in sort of a Spanish-Italian um, early Renaissance influence setting, which I think is really cool and really interesting. I absolutely love this book, rereading it again. It is just as strong now as it was when I read it in college. I think the magic system is really, really interesting. It has to do with art and painting, and there's also a lot of politics going on in here and political maneuvering, and it follows two families. One is the ruling family of the country that the story is set in, and the other one is a family of painters who some of them have this magical ability to paint things and that affect the real world, and I think that's just absolutely fascinating. It's a nice big book that gives space for character and plot development, but it's also a standalone, so it's great because when you're done, you're done, and you don't have to wait for anything else to come along. And I also really enjoyed a lot of the themes that I explored about art, about what is art, about how art style evolves, and how different things are considered good art at different times, and looking back, people don't necessarily appreciate the same sorts of artistic standards. And I would highly, highly recommend this. I really want to read more books by these three ladies, and I would love if we saw more of this type of collaboration going on because this was just a beautiful, beautiful book. I also was working on the Words of Radiance. I didn't quite make it to the end of this book, so this will be rolling over. So let's talk about the books that I want to read in the month of December. I will be participating in the Magical Readathon hosted by G over at Book Roast. This readathon is going to be a little bit different than the Owls and the Newts that she hosts every year, and the prompts are going to be released uh, every week instead of all at the beginning. So at the time of recording, she 
hasn't yet released the first set of prompts, so this TBR is going to be very loose and I'm going to try and leave a lot of space for flexibility for that. But here are a couple of the books that I'm hoping to have and include in that readathon. I would like to finish Words of Radiance. About 40% done with this one. Before I get to Oathbringer, I do want to read Adjanter, which is the Stormlight Archive novella that is found in the Arcanum Unbounded, so I'll be reading one of the stories from this book. I also want to finish the Reckoner series. I did not get to these in November. I have these books on Audible, and I was hoping to listen to them at work because I get to listen to audiobooks at work. Unfortunately, this month my work had some issues with their internet. I don't know if they were upgrading it or testing it or what was going on. They had to discontinue use of all streaming services while they were doing their work, so I wasn't able to listen to Audible. So hopefully that is working again soon and I'll be able to listen to these two on Audible. If not, I will probably pick them up and read the hard copies at some point in time this month because I do want to finish the series out this year. Another series I want to catch up on is the Thrawn series by Timothy Zahn. This is the third book, Thrawn Treason. I think that the Thrawn books have been some of the best of the new canon Star Wars books, and so I'm super excited to be reading this one and get caught up on this series. I'm also hoping to listen to New Spring, which is the Will of Time prequel this month. It's a uh, much shorter than the regular installment, so I thought this would be a good time to kind of put in a short book when I might not have quite as much time to listen at this busy season. I also would love to read the last volume in the Complete She's Sweet Home, volume number four. They have it at my library, so if I get on there and there's not a waitlist, I would love to read that. I also have two other books that I am getting very close to the beginning of the waitlist at the library. The first one of those is The Toll by Neil Schusterman. It's the last book in the Scythe series. That's the fourth book that I wanted to get to of the November new releases. Unfortunately, that hold was a little bit longer, so I didn't get that, but I am getting close to the front, so hopefully I'll get that in December. I am also getting very close to the front of the hold list for The Testaments, which is the Handmaid's Tale sequel that also came out recently. So I would love to read that in December if it comes through at the library. So those are all the books I read in November. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, happy reading. Say bye bye birdie!